Hi, I'm Nicole Scott from Mobile Geeks, and here I am in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. And today I'm going to be doing a comparison of the Sony QX10 wireless lens against the Lumia 1020. The Nokia Lumia 1020's innovative 41 megapixel sensor breaks new ground in terms of image quality on a smartphone. Apart from its stupendous resolution, the 1020's standout feature is its 2.7 times semi lossless digital zoom. It does a very decent impression of an optical zoom in the phone's 5 megapixel output with very little image quality degradation. If you want to see it in action, that's one of the things we're going to be comparing to the Sony QX10. The Sony QX10 is a wireless lens that attaches to the front of any smartphone. It uses NFC to connect and then Wi-Fi to send the images back to the phone itself. There is no display on the wireless lens and it has its very own battery pack inside. As well as on the front cover, if you don't use NFC to pair, there's a password and SSID. Along with storing the photos on the phone, you can actually also store them on the lens itself via micro SD card. The QX10 sports a 1 to 2.3 inch 18.9 megapixel sensor that's comparable in physical signs to what you might find on a mid-range point and shoot. Still, it's substantially larger than the embedded smartphone sensor on any of the devices that are currently on the market. So for the purposes of this comparison, we're going to be putting the QX10 up against the 1020 inside its camera grip case. Now the case does come with an extra battery, so if you are using it as a camera, you do get a little bit of extra life. And since they're really trying to make the 1020 feel like a camera, it kind of adds that extra bulk so it's a lot more comfortable and more stable in your hand. So let's go through the camera features on the 1020. So we have all the standard flash ones, so focus light, no focus light, flash on, auto, on, white balance. Uh, this is where I love about the controls, so you can pull it with your thumb here along the side. So we have all these different white balance options, all the same ones that I'm used to on, on my video camera actually. Uh, and then here's where it gets kind of interesting, where we can pull a manual focus. So you can see you have it on auto. Now if we drag it up, you see that the background becomes more sharpened. We pull it down, the foreground gets more blurry. So that's a really nice way to keep your photos nice and artsy. Now where the 1020 gets really interesting is that we can actually set our own ISO. So now you can see it starts at 100 here, or you can pull it all the way up to 4,000. Now what's really cool about this is for the first time ever, we also have a um, camera app that lets you set the ISO as well as setting the shutter speed. So it's kind of unusual. So camera apps in the past have let you set the ISO, but since they never report what the um, but since they never report what the shutter speed is, you're kind of left guessing about how high to crank the sensitivity to avoid blur. And then we're gonna probably see some action here on the street corner, hopefully. There we go, there's a nice fire engine coming along. Now let's set the shutter speed to auto. And then you see that we can also set exposure. So there's a nice Toronto fire truck heading off into, well, let's make it really dark, the sunset there. Uh, actually, right there on the corner. <laughs> Maybe we're gonna have a more exciting video after all. So this is, that was just a quick look at the settings. So now here we are at the Brookfield Place in downtown Toronto. Uh, it's absolutely gorgeous architecture in here and then we actually have a historic building right over there. But what I'm going to walk you through right now is the functions that we have on the QX10. So here you see that we only have really have three. So it's Intelligent Auto, Superior Auto and Program Auto. So Intelligent Auto and Superior Auto both have automatic scene selection. So if we go in here, you can see that we have things like we can tap to focus and we can move it around. We can cancel that. Uh, we can head in to Superior Auto. Uh, and actually the big difference between these two is that this one adds in HDR. So if we do take a photo, it takes a little bit longer to process. This is copying it over onto the device. And then there we go. Now the very last one is Program Auto. Now the biggest difference between this one, you can see it down here, it adds in uh, exposure so you can actually control the exposure uh, now the unfortunate thing that we don't have here is you can't control the ISO now when it comes to manual options like I went over before we actually don't have that many with an intelligent auto we have 33 different scenes that can be picked up and if you check this corner up here you'll often see different things kind of pop up there was a mountain there now there's someone speeding fast when the car went so within superior auto you'll actually come across 44 different scenes. 
Now, thanks to in-camera stacking of multiple exposures, the upper limit of the ISO actually climbs to 12,800. And for program auto, down in here, we also have the exposure of uh, 1600 and for movie shooting the ISO actually drops to 1000. So I've come across a couple of elephants roaming downtown Toronto. Now I'm going to see which one of these devices will take the quickest photo. All right, Lumia 1020. Done. So now we know that the QX10 doesn't fit in my pocket, so I'm going to reach from my back backpack pocket to see how quickly I'll be able to take the photo of these elephants that are just running away. I might miss the shot. All right, so here we go. Into the back. So now we're going to turn on the lens, unlock the phone. I left the app open to save time. So now we're going to run the Wi-Fi. Picked up the device. Now it's connecting, and now we're finally able to take a picture, flip it over so you don't drop it, close that, and snap. So I'm taking a look at the Sony at night. You can see that we definitely have some options, like I mentioned before. If we head into Superior Auto, then it has a higher range of ISO. Now one of the things that I didn't go over before is the settings within the camera. So if we pull this up here, we can choose to copy to connected devices. We can set the timer. Uh, now I've set both cameras to 16.9. Now in 16.9, the highest this, this can do is 13 megapixel. Now, but if we went up to 4.3, then it would be 18. So now heading back into the sections in here, review image, save options. So you can choose to save and review it to the smartphone as well. So copy it over. Let's see. The review image is only two megapixels, so that makes things a little bit quicker. And I like to hear the beep. Now format will actually delete all of the photos that you choose to save onto the lens itself. So now for those of you that are in the know, we are at Toronto's City Hall. In the winter time, this pond becomes ice. And I'm gonna go over some things within low light photography. Now you can see that we can obviously adjust the ISO if when we're in low light, that's one of the first things that a lot of experienced photographers will do. But if you look up here, I'll zoom in kind of closer. So check out the shutter speed. So keep a close eye on that. So as we move it along, it actually adjusts the shutter speed so that you get the best photo. Now you can obviously set the ISO and then go back and change the shutter speed if you're looking for like long streaky lines or you know anything that like real photographers like to do to, to make fancy photos. All right guys, we're having a change of venue now. We're clearly going apple picking in Ontario because that's what you do when you come here in the fall. So I have the QX10 and then I'm, I am going to zoom in. So this is gonna be the zoom test. All right, so I'm gonna pick that apple right up there. All right, now take a look at that. Then look how far that apple actually is. QX10. Now let's try the Lumia 1020. All right, so here we have the 1020 and the zoom on this is actually quite good. Because it's 41 megapixels, uh, it has more pixels to draw on when it does the zoom. But unfortunately, there's that bush that we were zooming in on the Q10 right up in there. So I'm gonna focus in on that. Take a photo. Uh, I mean, clearly, the, the, the quality on a zoom is, is still quite good. Let's pull that up. But this is nothing like what we have on the QX10. It actually looks, a, it looks pretty good, but it's, it's pixelated. And definitely not as good as the QX10. All right, so now we're going to try taking macro shots with the QX10. So it is a little bit windy out here, so the apple is moving. But let's take that photo. It's copying it over to the device. All right, so let's take a look at that. So now even using the Pad Phone Infinity, it does have a little bit of glare here, but I think you can tell. Look at that. Pretty impressive, if you ask me. So now let's look at the Lumia 1020. All right, so let's focus in on the Apple. There we go. 
Now let's pull that up. Let's take a look. That's also pretty good, but I'd have to say the QX10 just picked up a little more detail. Um, to be fair, all of these apples are moving in the wind just a little bit, but I mean, you can see the hair on that apple just right in there. And now we're gonna get into the pocketability test. How do these phones fit into my back pocket? All right, so let's start off with the QX10. How does this fit in to my back pocket? Well, clearly, I'm gonna lose it. If we try to fit it in this way. Maybe I'm gonna have to gain 50 pounds for that to look acceptable. Ah, there we go. All right, but no sitting, only walking. And it's kind of uncomfortable. And now let's check out the 1020, even with the camera grip. All right, so that does fit into your back pocket. It doesn't look super silly. Try it out this way. Put it in like that, it doesn't actually show too much. So I mean, uh, obviously for pocketability, it, does, it definitely goes to the, to the 1020. So what did you guys think? Which camera came out ahead? For me, I really do think that the QX10 does take a better picture, right? The colors are a little more true. There's a lot more depth in the pictures as well. I mean, you really can't fake the glass and it does come with a really amazing sensor and some really, really big glass. But when you take a look at around town usage and portability, well, it's very inconvenient. It's really large. Um, it takes a long time to pair and set up. It's definitely not for a user that has, you know, around the town sightseeing in mind. You know, pull out your phone really, really quickly. The 1020 pulls ahead massively for me. I mean, obviously there is some higher color saturations. They're pulling the contrast a little bit more, but at the same time, for ease of use, quality of photo and portability, for me, it's totally the 1020. But who is the ideal user for the Sony QX10? Well, I see it, somebody who likes to take a lot of photos and they're at one location taking a lot of photos. So if you, you know, have a family vacation, I think almost the two would be a good pairing, although that's far too expensive. Nobody can really afford to have a 1020 and the lens. Maybe you can, but I think that the combination would really work out for some people. But I think that the QX10, if you're going to one spot and you're gonna take a lot of photos of one thing, so you're going to see the Taj Mahal, and you don't want to bring a DSLR because you're insane, but you have the QX10. That would be way better, right? Or if you have a really crappy smartphone, then that would be a solution for you. I mean, it is $250, so it is a little bit pricey, but I do definitely see a place in the market for this, and I do think that eventually the price will come down so it's a little more accessible. I mean, this is the first generation of this series of devices and this is Sony is the first company to kind of make moves and innovate in this space so hopefully we're going to be seeing it come down to the hundred dollar price point and then everyone will have a kick-ass lens for their smartphone so that's just my two cents I'm Nicole Scott from Mobile Geeks if you enjoyed this camera comparison you should definitely like this video and while you're at it why don't you subscribe to our channel what?